Hello YouTube! Today I'm in Kerbal Space Program again with episode 4 of my modded playthrough and uh, in this one we're going to start our base on the moon. So obviously our base is going to be to mine keythane and you know generally do some cool stuff. Uh, we'll see what we can do in the future but uh, this this part we're sending up is essentially um, a drilling station, a smallish drilling station. We may build a bigger one sometime in the future, but I want to see how the drilling works and how much power we need, that kind of thing. Um, so basically this uh, is carrying two kerbals with an... let me think, it's an MK2 command pod? I can't remember exactly. But basically it holds two kerbals and um, we've got a little fuel tank as well and uh, a keythane tank with a couple of drills and some solar panels as well but you'll see that in a bit basically now we're just ascending uh, getting a decent orbit first of all so that we can make a transfer burn to the moon so you'll see there we are just burning up and uh, standard gravity turn you know 10 kilometers ish pitching to 45 degrees and then waiting till our apoapsis gets up to around 80 kilometers which i find is quite a good safe place to start a burn from then what we do is actually, um, the, the kind of thing I'd, I've done a few times before and I've explained a couple of times before, where we burn horizontally and then burn slightly up or slightly down depending on where our apoapsis is to make sure that we get a pretty circular orbit. And we actually get a pretty perfect orbit this time around. I was really happy with how that went. But um, now all I'm waiting to do is get up there. So while we're waiting till we get a bit closer, what could we talk about? Well could talk a bit about, um, I don't know, how about Keythane? I mean, we've used it quite a bit, looks like a pretty cool uh, mod so far. And there we are, by the way, making our circularization burn. And uh, it looks like, from what I've seen, Keythane is going to be quite a useful resource. And, you know, we'll definitely be able to maybe set up a base and make it so we can make some kind of single stage to moon that can return and it returns using fuel that it uh, picks up from the Keythane mining facility on the moon. That'd be kind of cool, so we can have a big base with loads of kerbals that are constantly being uh, moved around. That'd be a really awesome thing to try and do, so I might try and do that uh, so at some point in the future. And here we are, we're just time warping till we see the moon on the horizon, which is generally a good time to start burning. So I think with the uh, with the Keythane mod, that's what we'll be able to do. We'll also be able to use the remote, uh, not the remote tech, the Kerbal attachment system to sort of transfer Keythane around between things. And I think the next piece that we'll launch up will essentially be a big Keythane converter and storage unit, which may or may not have Kerbals in it. I, I generally don't think it will, but uh, it might. I don't know. We'll see. Um, anyway, there we are, we get a periapsis that's well under 100 kilometers. I think it's about 30 kilometers, and we're just trying to go across that um, sphere of influence line as slowly as we can. One thing I'd like to mention before it starts to get too interesting is um, I've kind of stopped using intros now. I think it's a good idea because it's essentially five seconds of your guys' time wasted for pretty much no reason. I mean, you know it's going to be one of my videos because it's made by me. So there's not really much point putting that at the start. So I've gonna, I'm gonna, gonna stop doing that and uh, hopefully you'll still like the video. Uh, I don't think it makes that much difference. So. And I, I didn't really think it fitted with the whole Kerbal thing. It was a bit too serious. And, you know, we'll see. Uh, so it'd be nice if you could leave some feedback about that in the comments below if you have any opinions, because opinions are good. Anyway, we've got into a circular orbit now, and we need to wait, uh, I'd, I'd like to wait until um, the bit that we want to land on is on the light side of the moon. So I actually switch to another vessel and time warp, and there we go, we're back, and uh, we're pretty much in a place where we can, well, get ready to burn retrograde anyway. So I'll just time warp a little bit, but you can see, actually... There we are. And somebody was asking for a precision landing tutorial. That's something I'm going to do, but you'll see how I do it here. Basically, I slow myself down, so I'm coming and my intersection with the moon is sort of just past where we want to go. Then I'm actually going to burn south, just to make it so my um, path actually goes over the top of where I want to land. Then I burn retrograde a little bit more, just to bring myself a little bit closer to where I actually want to land. This step, though, you, you know, you don't want to overdo this, because um, you don't want to actually be coming down to land exactly where whatever it is you want to land next to is 
because you do want to eliminate all your horizontal velocity and have hopefully a vertical landing. It's a lot easier than just coming down horizontally. So you want to leave a bit of leeway there so you can get over the top pretty much of where you want to land and then start burning um, and know that you will still fall down reasonably close. And there we are, we're starting to slow ourselves down a bit more. Uh, not necessarily using full throttle, but here we go, now we get really close. And then we split off and use the engines that are on our sort of landing stage, which we will actually split off later, it's not very useful, it's just a little fuel tank. And I didn't think it'd be worth keeping, because it's kind of small anyway. So anyway, there we are, and you can see we're coming down reasonably well. We've got four little landing legs there, so it's not too high off the ground for the keythane drills to work. I was a bit conscious about that, but I actually think it was okay in the end. And now I'm just going to try and come down. You can see there the uh, little rover that we had is there, and there's also that rock there um, that's sort of behind us, the big one that you can see, is where we parked that at the end of the last video. Um, we did move it a little bit afterwards, or I did. I don't know whether I did that on camera, actually. But you can also see the little um, segment of girder that was from the, from the sky crane, I think. Or it was, yeah, it was something to do with the sky crane. I can't remember exactly. I think it was how the sky crane attached to the rover, or maybe how the rover attached to the um, the rest of the rocket. I can't remember exactly. Anyway, now I'm just doing a little jump, a hop over to get a bit closer to this rock, and a bit closer to our, our rover as well. Anyway, there we are. We're safe down, and now I'm going to get rid of that um, not very useful stage which I've made sure splits off and doesn't leave the decoupler behind. And uh, I end up just sort of launching it a bit into the ground. <laughs> the de decoupler actually survives though, unfortunately. Um, you know, I generally try and get rid of all this stuff if I can. But um, yeah, everything seems okay. The other thing I'd like to get a bit of feedback on is how loud I speak. Because I can speak like this all the time and it probably maxes out the microphone. Or I can speak really quietly and more soft. I don't know what you guys like. It sound, sounds a bit weird, but, you know, if you want me to speak nice and softly, <laughs> then go ahead and tell me. That's another thing that I'm a bit unsure about. Anyway, everything's looking good for that giveaway. I think I'll manage to get a copy of Kerbal Space Program. And I've spoken to Matt Dennis, who seemed to think that it will be okay. Squad won't really mind that much, and I didn't think they would. Um, although I still would like to get in touch with somebody about that, I'm not really sure. Uh, but I can't see it really being a problem, so it looks like the giveaway is going to go ahead, and I'll probably do that sometime a bit closer to Christmas, so a few weeks' time. Um, I'll probably end up doing it a bit before Christmas, so that if, you know, you have a friend who really wants a copy of Kerbal Space Program, you can give it to them for Christmas. Or I can give it to whoever wants a copy for Christmas. Anyway, anyway, we'll see. So that you will actually be able to play Kerbal on Christmas Day and annoy the rest of your family by sitting in front of a computer all day because that's how I obviously spend Christmas. Anyway, <laughs> you can see here we've turned the keythane drills on before we actually get out. I turned one of them off just to see what the power drawer is like um, in the end. But anyway, it seems to work fairly well, and you can see all the green smoke coming off, which indicates that uh, keythane is being drilled. And we can, although we can't uh, run at full power all the time, we can um, still mine with both all the time, even if they're a bit short on power. Anyway guys, thanks for watching the video, I hope you liked it. If you did, then feel free to give it a thumbs up and a favourite. If you have any suggestions or questions, then leave a comment down below, and uh, as I said, have a nice day.